I've been making videos since something like 2007 or 2008. My first video editing experience was on my phone, where the only editing I was able to do was pause the video and continue recording later. And even though you can actually get pretty creative even with those restrictions, the biggest issue with that phone was that it barely had any room for storing files. I was stuck with like 150 kilobytes of space, so I constantly had to delete videos that I had already made to make room for new ones. I only kept the videos which I was really proud of, and I probably watched them like dozens of times even though I knew everything that happened in them by heart. My video editing experience was upgraded though when I got a Sony Ericsson phone that not only had a massive 2GB memory card but also some kind of video editing software pre-installed on it. It lets you do some very basic editing such as montaging, transitions and it even had the ability to add text between your footage. And even though that phone had a better camera than the previous one, the video quality was still awful. But despite that, I still made a lot of videos with that program, some of which I'd love to show in this video, but unfortunately they never left the phone, which by now I've of course lost. I actually still remember the day and approximate location of where I lost it. I even remember regretting wearing shorts that had pockets without zippers where I decided to keep the phone. I even went searching for the phone when I realized that I lost it, but it was nowhere to be found, which made me conclude that somebody just found it and decided to keep it to themselves despite having the ability to just call someone and let them know that they found the phone. I sometimes do wonder whether or not that person ever saw those videos because those videos were most definitely really embarrassing. But regardless of that, if it were possible, I'd still pay hundreds of monies to get the phone back because no matter how cringy those videos were, they were still, in a way, a documentation of my childhood memories that I'll never be able to see again as I no longer have access to the phone. But anyway, one of the reasons I made those videos in the first place was because I was inspired by YouTube videos and had always wanted to make my own, but I just didn't really know how to. I actually tried uploading a San Andreas mission walk that I recorded with a digital camera, but the video never published because the file size was too big for my YouTube account at the time. However, everything changed when one day my friend introduced me to Hypercam 2 and Windows Movie Maker. And Windows Movie Maker was once again a pretty simple program. It was mostly meant for family travel videos and pirating tutorials. But thanks to Windows Movie Maker, I was able to successfully upload my first video to YouTube in the summer of 2009. It was of course a RuneScape money-making guide with some basic ass methods that pretty much everyone knew already, but having made that video really opened a whole new world to me. I finally knew how to make videos for YouTube and came out that I really enjoyed it as well. And over time, I actually got so comfortable with Windows Movie Maker that I kind of started pushing the limits of what you can do with that program, and it's pretty surprising how far you can go when you get creative with the restrictions bestowed upon you. But still, I wanted to go further because I really liked these videos called RSMVs, and some of them had ridiculously good editing. They were most certainly a starting point for many people who by now are actual professional video editors by career. And for making videos like that, Windows Movie Maker was too limiting because it didn't even have keyframing support, so I started using Sony Vegas, which pretty much everyone used for those kinds of videos. And I actually still use Sony Vegas to this day. In fact, I'm literally editing this video in Sony Vegas right now, however, at one point I also learned this really powerful software called Adobe After Effects. The reason I learned it actually had nothing to do with making RS videos, but instead because I wanted to make videos in this genre called montage parody. It was a genre that parodied gaming montages and one clip edits by basically doing the same thing except ironically. And I swear the genre was actually really fresh and funny at the time man, I swear to god. But despite the contents of montage parodies being ironic, it was still one of the most demanding genres in terms of editing skill, which is why once again I wanted to up my own editing game as well, and the natural next step was to learn After Effects to free myself from the limitations of Sony Vegas. But the videos I make now on this channel are really different from what I used to make. Rather than requiring a lot of visual effects, they are much more demanding in terms of montaging and timeline editing, which is something that Sony Vegas is amazing for, but After Effects isn't designed for at all. That being said, there are still things that I want to do in my videos for which Sony Vegas is too limited for that could be done with After Effects. However, like I explained in the previous video, working back and forth with Vegas and After Effects is less than ideal, and I also explained why I don't want to learn Adobe Premiere. Which is why, my hope is to replace both Sony Vegas and After Effects with a free video editing software called DaVinci Resolve. However, since I've literally only used Resolve for like 5 minutes and haven't really watched any video showcasing it, I have no clue whether or not Resolve is actually designed to be what I'm hoping it to be and that's what I wanna find out in this video. I'm going to record my own live experience with using Resolve and hopefully by the end of this video I'll be able to tell whether or not I can use Resolve for all of my upcoming videos from this day forward, so let's find out.
Alright, so here I am in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm using the 18 beta. I'm using the beta version because, you know, I'm completely new to Resolve, so I might as well just use the latest version to see all the new features. The first thing I notice is that it has, like, multiple different timeline editing formats, I guess, or, like, interfaces. Ooh, got some RGB here. Kinda looks like the fan that you get with the AMD Ryzen processors. Okay, anyway, I guess we need some media. Okay, we have some media now. Oh, I guess it comes here. Okay, let's just try dropping it here. Um, uh, not sure if I... I guess I can't change their position, or... Why does it say 1? Does it mean that I'm, like, on the first minute? Um, that's kind of weird. I'm not sure why it says zero one. one Alright, um, what do we have? Video, audio, effects, transitions. Guess I can't click on them, though. And I guess clicking on the timeline doesn't move the cursor I have to click up here. Well, that's kind of annoying, I suppose, but... You know, if you get started with some new piece of software, you should probably just look into some beginner's tutorial and something, but I kind of want to just explore on my own. Like, I learned Sony Vegas and a bunch of other software by just exploring myself and then looking at tutorials. I suppose when I get stuck, I'll just Google something simple as well. Okay, I guess this is the note thing. I heard something about the notes, but this is pretty spooky. I don't really know how it's going to work yet. But where the f- Oh, <laughs> an effects button is up here, I guess. Guess I didn't see it. Ooh, okay. Okay, we got some transitions here. Okay, let's uh, let's cut this. Oh god. Can I just use the cut tool here? Okay, I can. Epic. What if I overlay these two clips? I really hope that it doesn't cut the clip because in Sony Vegas, if you overlay two clips like this, it just applies a fade. But in Premiere, it just cuts the clip. And I assume that DaVinci Resolve kind of wants to copy Premiere more than they want to copy Sony Vegas. So let's see. Ah, uh, wait, S? Wait, these are Sapphire effects. I used the Sapphire plugin in Sony Vegas. What? What? I haven't even done anything. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> this song. I want this. Okay. Wait, how does it work? This is some anime effects. Mmm, it's still kind of slow. It has to be faster. It can't go smaller. What? Okay, is it like two frames? Okay, I guess it's really... Okay, where am I? Where... <laughs> what is going on? Okay, I... the timelining is definitely less intuitive than Sony Vegas. I can't use my scroll wheel. Okay, I have to press control. Wait, no. Okay, I have to press alt, I suppose. Can I like RAM preview? Like, I can't tell if this is real time or... Wait, 24. Wait, this is 24 FPS. I have to change it. Okay, project settings. I found it. 24. What is this? 60. 60. They don't have 2K for some reason. Oh, that's sad. I guess I'll put it manually. There you go. Save. Ooh, Jim's got a little bigger. Okay, can I control it properly now? Is it two frames? Okay, I can't see the transition because it's like two frames and it's not like RAM previewing it. I don't know how to like properly view it. Okay, let's go back to effects and see what we have. I'll use this push animation. Did it, did it, oh my god, that's so annoying. Epic. We have the Liva Givi starter pack, a push transition and teams. Anyway, I want to see some effects. Got a bunch of generators. Effects. You have reached a limitation with DaVinci Resolve. What? Wait, you need to pay to use over 60 FPS? Mmm. Warning, unknown tool. Okay, um, gotta say I'm a bit disappointed. I thought DaVinci Resolve was free unless you use it in like a professional setting, which has some like collaboration tools or something. I thought all the effects and, you know, control over your project was free, but it's kind of weird. I just hope that I can actually use it properly. What does night vision do? We got some green teams here. Wait, how do I see effects? Okay. Okay, okay. So it's the effects is here because we have the... I see, I see, I see. What if I do this? Oh, okay. I can just turn it off. Is this it? Is this all the effects there is? Really? You have reached the limitation. Warning, unknown tool. Why? Don't disappoint me, Da Vinci. Lens blur. 
You have reached the limitation. Is it really going to start telling me this literally every fucking time? Color generator. Oh, this is like a mask. That's kind of cool. Motion trails. Oh, that's kind of cool. Too bad it uses the watermark. I wish there was like something that actually told me what's a premium feature and what isn't. Because like, I don't know. if Is, is this a premium feature? Is the only way to tell if I like have this uh, watermark on it? If that's really the case, then I'm really disappointed. I actually thought it was like a free program. Unless you need to use it in like an office studio or something. Let's just use this mosaic blur and see try to control it a bit can i apply the effects of this clip to this one copy paste attributes stretch to fit oh that's nice okay i'm glad that you're able to like copy all of these things read time as well that's pretty nice i really like that huh wait huh why is it gone <laughs> where is he huh wait why does he appear in the middle of the video? Why? Wait, did I keyframe this? Wait, is it automatic keyframing? Where do I see the keyframes? Where are all the keyframes? Hmm, where are the keyframes? Did it seriously keyframe everything? How do I access the keyframes? Maybe in Fusion. Let's see. Uh, no. Color. No, that's just gamers. Um, okay. It's getting kind of hard, not gonna lie. GPU failed. The GPU failed to perform image processing because of an error. Um, okay. I kind of wish you didn't tell me that, honestly. So far, this video is an absolute disaster. Okay, anyway. I guess we can try adding more stuff. Okay, let's add the Duolingo Owl. Where is it? Why can I not see it? Okay, did it really just take- Whoa, that is just really, really slow. Can I make it faster? Like, can I, like, reduce the quality or something? How do I, like, change the width between these two windows? I guess I can. Mm. Um, can I play the video? Is it playing? Is it really that slow? You keep... What? I have 6 gigabytes, and I haven't even used it. How do I... Uh, how? Oh my god, this video is an absolute nightmare so far. Oh, is it playing? It is playing, but like, why is it so slow? <laughs> what is going on, man? Okay, I'll just do some Googling, man. I can't get anywhere like this. Well, I did a little bit of Googling, and the first thing I saw was to change my GPU processing mode to CUDA, but it's already on CUDA, clearly. I don't have OpenCEL because I have a NVIDIA card, so... Okay, I'll just restart Resolve, I suppose. I don't know. Okay, I restarted Resolve. Is it, does it work now? Well, it's fast again, but why did it get so slow before? I guess there aren't any keyframes, it was just so laggy before that I wasn't even able to tell. I want to take this Duolingo and I want to only have the logo and not the text. Cropping, okay, perhaps cropping. Cropping isn't really masking, but maybe we can just succeed with just cropping right now. Okay, that's nice, I suppose. Can I like move the clip somehow inside? Well, I guess I can't. Or do I literally just have to use this? No, there's no way. There's no way, it's too much. How do I... Okay, I think I really need to use a tutorial. I literally just can't do anything. Because clearly, this program is not intuitive enough for me to even find stuff such as the pan and crop options where I can move around the footage in freeform. So that's kind of problematic. So I guess I'm going to start looking into some course or tutorial series on DaVinci Resolve and see how it goes. So I'll let you know when I've looked into something. Okay, so I've been looking for a course or some video series and I think the official videos on the DaVinci website are probably a good place to start. I usually like independent videos because they are most likely more detailed and perhaps realistic, but I think they are a good place to start because they seem to have a decent amount of content and they are official, so maybe they teach best practices. Also, I just wanted to say that I did discover how to move things around freely. Apparently you have to press this button here and then you can. You can even like 
zoom and rotate and that's actually really nice this is actually really nice this is better than sony vegas already because in sony vegas you can't really just move the object inside the preview window you have to use a separate tool which basically moves the camera instead of the object so the fact that davinci resolve actually has this feature really motivates me to keep on learning it i guess i'll start looking at these videos and i'll let you know how it goes Okay, so I just finished all of these videos. It took me well over five hours. I've been basically doing this the entire day. This is the project of the first tutorial. And I gotta say, after finishing it, I was pretty much certain that I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve for all my upcoming videos from this day forward. Even though I wouldn't say that it has the perfect user experience, it still seemed like it was a really big upgrade over Sony Vegas overall, provided that I got really good at it. So I was really motivated to keep on learning it. Until I finished the last tutorial in the first section. You see, the last tutorial was about applying special effects, which is something that I really like to do. And what do you know, DaVinci Resolve seems to be pretty powerful in that aspect. It looked really promising. You can literally like draw with a pencil over a green screen and it will automatically cut it out. Just make sure you don't go over the edge though. Uh, oops. <laughs> but that's alright though, all I have to do is just press undo. Uh, all I have to do is just press undo. Mm. Well, comes out that you actually can't undo effect changes. So if you mess up your green screen or accidentally deposition something, you have to literally start all over again. This combined with the fact that you apparently can't see keyframes for the effects that you're applying basically rendered DaVinci Resolve completely unusable for me. Never have I ever in my life actually considered paying for Adobe Creative Cloud, but this seriously made me feel like maybe it's not that bad of an idea after all. I mean, if DaVinci Resolve is unusable for me, my only choice is either to continue with Sony Vegas, which is limiting, or just learn Adobe Premiere and use it in conjunction with Adobe After Effects, which actually sounds pretty appealing, especially since I already know After Effects. That was... Until I found out that if you click off the effects panel, then suddenly undo works on effects again. What? This better be a bug. This, this seriously better be a bug. If this is an actual feature, then I don't know if I want to use this program. Anyway, if I'm at least able to undo, then the program is still somewhat usable. Keyframes not showing up for effects is still a serious productivity issue, but maybe I can still live with it and I still haven't learned the fusion feature. So even though I feel like I could just easily stop here and just go learn Premiere, which I think is a pretty good idea actually, I'm still going to give DaVinci Resolve another benefit of the doubt and keep going with the tutorial. So I'll see you when I'm done with another section. Okay, I just finished the last tutorial in the official tutorial series. I watched and followed every single one of them except the ones I couldn't. It took me over 20 hours in total and I paid as much attention as I could to give DaVinci Resolve a fair chance. Now the question is, am I going to be using DaVinci Resolve for my upcoming videos? And the answer is... Yes, I will. After I gave it another chance and continued with the tutorials, I gotta say that DaVinci Resolve exceeded my expectations. Audio editing in the Fairlight page is smoother and more powerful than I could have ever asked for, the program runs in smooth 165Hz, the fusion feature truly can do pretty much everything After Effects can, I mean you can literally even import Photoshop files, and even though I've never been too interested in color correction, I actually grew some interest towards it because I learned so much about it in the coloring page. On top of that, having everything such as the tools for time Timeline editing, audio, color correction, and even motion graphics all in one program is truly a godsend. DaVinci Resolve is clearly an extremely powerful program and I most definitely won't be limited by it, and the best part is that I didn't even have to pirate it because it's free. Yabakunai? However, there are some issues. Remember that GPU memory error that I got earlier in the video? Well, it has happened to me multiple times since then. Most of the time I actually won't get an error, but everything will just slowly start getting really laggy and glitchy. I'm still unsure whether or not this is fixable or not without having to restart resolve every single time, so if you know something that may help, you can let me know. 
And another really bad issue is that quite often some effects, for example, can produce render bugs with seemingly no workaround other than to disable what's causing it. No matter how powerful and amazing a video editing program is, if you can't actually render the final product without glitches, it's basically unusable and I still have to use something else. There are some important effects and features still locked behind the paid version of Resolve, which, I mean, if I'm going to be using Resolve for potentially decades to come, I don't mind buying it one day, but obviously the paid version isn't going to make those bugs or memory issues go away either. Only the developers can do that. But I actually have hope that they will, which is why I decided that I'll try to work around those issues for now and still start making videos with Resolve from this day forward. Of course I don't know what it's actually going to be like to make a 30 minute video with Resolve yet, I mean maybe it's going to be way slower and more problematic compared to Sony Vegas, but there's only one way to find out, and even if I do decide that I'll have to go back to Vegas in the end, I don't regret the time I put into learning this program. You shouldn't always settle on what's more comfortable, even though I had to and have to spend a lot of time on learning Resolve, which delayed this video and possibly will even delay future videos by several weeks, if I had never even tried, 10 years could go by and I'd still be making videos with my cracked copy of Vegas 13 whilst being limited by the software the entire time. And obviously, not settling doesn't only apply to video editing software, it's about always moving forward, improving and keeping your passion burning. This YouTuber called Seto Kochi really inspires me because because often people around his age start to settle, even on YouTube. Veteran YouTubers often burn out and find some kind of an easy format that they're comfortable with and settle on it. They stop experimenting and putting in effort that isn't within their comfort zone and I personally find it really sad because it's a clear indication that many of those people have lost passion for what they're doing and no longer find joy from trying new things. And I know that feeling, which is why I don't like seeing other people experiencing it. The reason I say Seto inspires me is because even though he has been doing YouTube for over 10 years, years, having made thousands of videos, and despite having reached an age where most people have already settled, his passion keeps burning. He keeps pushing forward, going out of his comfort zone, and putting effort into learning new things, and I actually think that this unpronounced personality to not settle is what keeps his passion towards various things going. I know that deep down, me and Seto are actually really different in terms of what drives us, but that's just another thing that inspires me. Watching his videos has really helped me find more joy from simple, silly, innocent things from everyday life, and to not be so focused on the big picture all the time whilst overthinking and over calculating every small action I take throughout the day. And yes, I am aware that I just went on a completely unrelated tangent in terms of the topic of the video and that I should just cut it out and use it in a different video instead, but you know what, I'll just keep it in. After all, Seto is who indirectly inspired me to learn DaVinci Resolve. He actually put a lot of effort into learning it as well, despite already knowing Adobe Premiere and After Effects, but he decided to stay curious and to not settle. I am also aware that he actually had similar issues with Resolve and that he switched back to Premiere for now. But despite that, I was still inspired enough to go ahead and try learning Resolve myself as well and see what happens. And even if I do end up making the next video in Vegas anyway, I still learn quite a lot of stuff about video editing in general and and video editing once again feels fresh and exciting. But I guess we won't know that until the next video, so I guess I'll see you there.